sticking with our top story, which is the fallout from the allegations that a top BBC presenter paid a teenager for sexually explicit images. Joining us now to discuss this, Joe Hemmings, the behavioural psychologist. Hello, Joe. Good to have you on the programme. So, so what this person, this individual, is accused of having done is paying a 17-year-old for explicit pictures, which, if that is true, is against the law, because when it comes to explicit sexual pictures, you're still deemed to be a child when you're 17, even though you're over the age of consent. But also, the family of this young person allege that the presenter paid for this young person to effectively perform for him or her, I'm assuming, on a screen or on a phone or on a computer via a, a, a kind of WhatsApp type of uh, FaceTime type of a thing. Um, and that this person paid this very young individual an awful lot of money, in fact, £35,000 since that person was 17, and that that young person spent the money on crack cocaine and really fueling a, a, a massive addiction. You can buy an awful lot of crack cocaine for £35,000. And I'm just wondering and concerned about what what kind of behaviour is this when you want, when you're a much older individual and you want to pay a much younger individual a lot of money to see pictures of them that are explicit and see them in inverted commas perform? What's happening there? Well, we know it's certainly very wrong behaviour as well as unlawful. Uh, some would say it was a sense of entitlement. Uh, I feel it's, it's that feeling that this person would have had an invincibility. Um, and with that goes this sense that you want something, you can afford it, you'll pay for it. And also, you, you know, what's so wrong about it is that he would have come across as a trusted individual employed by, a, you know, our biggest public broadcaster. Um, and to an impressionable 17-year-old, firstly, 35,000 quid is a lot of money to anybody, but certainly to a 17-year-old. Yeah. And he was simply buying his way into his pleasure and felt he could get away with it. And that's a... A very strange thing, isn't it? Because you think if you're in the public eye, if you're well known, if, as this person is alleged to be, you're a household name, so isn't any country or any, any house in the country where they don't know who you are, they know who you are instantly. And as you say, you work for a, an institution as august, as well respected as the BBC. You would think, my God, I'm instantly recognisable. I better not do that because if I do that, they'll know it's me and they'll tell. And if they tell, it'll blow my cover you know, into smithereens. Everyone will know what I'd like, everyone will know what I'm into, everybody will know that I'm paying a 17-year-old to show me explicit pictures of him or herself. Uh, this will absolutely destroy the edifice of the reputation I spent my entire career building up. Therefore, better not do that. That would be really, really self-destructive and stupid. And also, as you quite rightly say, against the law and an abuse of power. But, but why wouldn't someone think that they would topple if they do this? Again, it's down to invincibility. So you've got levels of arrogance. You've got levels above that of entitlement, where people believe that because they're in a position of power and influence, they can probably get away with it. And at the top of that triangle, you've got invincibility. And that is somebody who thinks, I don't really care about the um, organisation I work for. I'm sure I'll be OK. I'm so influential, I'm so powerful, I'm so important that I can have what I want and no one is going to spill the beans about it. And if anybody does find out, it may well be covered up for me because I'm a very important person within that broadcasting company. That is invincibility. And it's really quite shocking in its dimension of, of you know, it's just feeling that you can, as you say, you explain it so well, that, that this person thinks they can get away with it because they are so influential, so important, if you like, so critical that they will get away with it even if they were to be found out. 
that I mean, it is a most extraordinary state of affairs, isn't it? Because you would think, um, and, and to some extent, this has been the story of my own life. You know, once you become a well-known face, once you become someone that people recognise, once you know that if you walk into a room, there are various people saying, oh, isn't that Vanessa Feltz? And is that her over there? You know that you better behave in a certain way, because if you don't, there'll be somebody with a mobile phone happily recording whatever you've done that is shameful or embarrassing or, you know, illegal or whatever it is you may find yourself doing or may want to do. And so, really, if you have... If you have your wits about you, you decide not to do it. You think, I better not do that. I certainly better not do that in public, because if I do, how am I going to feel when it appears in the papers the next day? Or how would I feel if my children found out? Or how would I feel if my boss found out? How would I feel if my parents found out? You know, all the things that stop us doing things, usually it's that kind of thing. I wouldn't want anyone to know. And as soon as your face is a well-known face, you know there'll be loads of people only too thrilled to tell. It's a combination of humility, self-preservation, common sense, perhaps more than anything else. And look at the ramifications of this. We've had other key presenters being almost implicitly coerced to make statements on social media. It wasn't me. Yeah. I mean, that's how extraordinary the situation is, that, you know, press the panic button on other people in case they feel it might be them. And of course, they never consider anything like that. So it's a really, really extraordinary situation. and. I totally get the public's vested interest in what's going on because it's it's enormous. Yeah. yeah. And of course, we're all curious, more than curious, just want to know what on earth is going on and can they get on with it quickly? And I want to I want to ask you something. I mean, we all remember, for example, this this enormous shock when there's a dichotomy or a big chasm between what the person on the screen projects themselves as, what they want you to think they are, and then what they really are. And if there's a big divide between who you're portraying yourself as and what you're actually like in private, it's absolutely shocking for fans and viewers and listeners because they have been relating to you in one particular way, assuming that you are the person you're projecting on the screen, and then you turn out not to be. So everyone will remember, for example, Frank Boff, who was just everyone's favourite uncle in his knitted sweater, filming with his wife Nesta going on the Norfolk Broads. Do you remember all that? He couldn't have been cosier. He couldn't have seemed to be more avuncular. And then it was exposed that he was, do you remember, I think, do, doing cocaine and prostitutes and dressing yeah. in bondage gear and God knows what. And, you know, the fallout was cataclysmic. People just could not believe it. Likewise, obviously, the, the more recent, uh, you know, Jimmy Savile scandals, Rolf Harris, these beloved national figures who project themselves as A and are actually Z. They're nothing like what they seem to be. Michael Barrymore was another one who appeared to be Mr Saturday Night, appeared to be a certain kind of person, turned out to be living an entirely different life. Tell me about what that is in a personality where you're trying to flog this idea that you are a certain kind of person, but you're not, you're patently not at all. No, and as you begin to say the names, more and more come to mind. I'm sure they are to yours, they are to mine. There was a whole mass of them at one point. And I think that is part of that invincibility because I present myself as somebody who perhaps is very serious or is employed for very important occasions or I'm a very significant person within um, this broadcasting corporation, I that is what the public see and therefore I am even less likely to be caught out. And, and perhaps the pressure of being that person that we all believe they are, the very serious, if they're in news, for example, you know, lots of, generally news is pretty gloomy and bad. Maybe there's a part of them that just, feels that pressure of presenting and therefore there's a part of them that comes out and they haven't got the, the, the critical distance, if you like, to be able to appreciate the magnitude of what they're actually doing and, and the ramifications of that behaviour.